Good morning, everybody. This is so fun. I told Jean and Celine we're coming back weekly. <laughs> hey, we have to be somewhere. We might as well be here. Good vibes in the house. Even Buddha will get even healthier. Yeah. Be all... Buddha is uh, Celine's cat, for those of you who might not know. And uh, so I'm so happy. Thank you, Clyde. Thank you, Celine and Lynette and Jean and Celine for opening your home. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm so happy. What you can't see here is we have a, a little wing. We have a wing over here with some people and there's people in front. So it's actually quite lovely. And the, the sound of that chant. Oh, man, I'm so tired of hearing myself sing. <laughs> I mean, really tired of hearing myself <laughs> say, you don't understand. But that was just that was just delightful. So let's take the let's go into the peace practice. Oh, let's take a big breath and do an exaggerated release. Oh, oh man, hear those sounds, the sounds of relief. And I wish, I really do wish, this is a wish that I had no reason to have to focus on peace. Mm. But alas, mm. life keeps being life. And so today I'm gonna to focus this peace practice on something very specific. And I'm gonna ask you to please join me. There was a precious life. I don't know the story, I don't know what happened, but let's take the life of Tyre into our hearts right now. Let's know that he, his family, and everyone involved in that, that there's something here to be, re to be rele um, realized. Let us look with our open heart at, these, at life and the way it is from the mountaintop. Not so that we are embroiled in the trauma but that we bring our knowing and our love and our compassion and we look down over it and just allow wisdom to come to us. God bless that family for that loss, my dear. And let us allow ourselves to bring a sense of peace, love, and compassion on this day and on all days. Please repeat after me. I am the peace that I wish to see. I am the peace that I wish to see. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my community. I know this peace for my community. My community knows this peace for the world. My community knows this peace for the world. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Sam. So today's title of the talk is Create the Life You Desire. And that sounds very lofty. And sometimes I think we get a little carried away. And some and, and sometimes it's mistranslated, like, oh, I could be rich, or oh, I could be famous, or oh, I could, you know, and we're, you know, science of mind is just not a get rich quick thing. It's not, and it was never meant to be. It was never meant to be. It was really meant to, 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 as an invitation for individuals to develop a relationship with the divine and this, this energy that, that is everywhere present. So um, last night, my beloved little granddaughter broke her arm. So it led to me having a sleepover with the two older ones. And, um, you know, they're getting older and this it gets interesting. And um, they were, I was putting them to bed and um, I was exhausted from the day and probably the emotions of the of going to the hospital, the emergency room being the one that they call. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I put them down to bed and then William comes upstairs. He says, Nanny, I, I need a cuddle. <laughs> so we cuddle for a little bit upstairs and then we go downstairs and now I'm laying there in the bed be, it's a pull out Ikea thing and I'm laying there between the two of them and Lila clearly also wanted a cuddle 
So I'm, t I'm turned toward Will because he's seven and he gets emotional at sleepovers. And I, and, but what happened was, so I'm, my arm is over him, this one, and this hand was here. And Lila reached up and she took my hand and she wouldn't let go of my hand. And I could feel. <laughs> I could feel this energy like moving between us, a connection that was so precious. And I thought, this is what life is about. This is what family is about. This is what love is about, is experiencing those moments. And I was just enveloped in this pocket, this incredible pocket of love. And it was a stunning, absolutely stunning experience. What a gift. It was just such a gift. Oh, my God. And I say that to you because for me that. When what and for every parent in the room, for every grandparent in the room, for every step parent in the room. <laughs> It, developing this relationship with the divine that is really ours is part of how to use it. And whether it's children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews or your neighbor's kids that you might have access to or influence over, the fact remains that we teach through how we model and when we are the presence of love, that's what, that is what is conveyed. So I took the, the, you know, the title of this, this chapter is how to use it. But I, if you put a, um, a question mark at the end of it, how do you use it? Right. <laughs> then it kind of says something a little bit differently. And so for me, when I, we haven't had regular science of mind classes in so long, I have to say when I used to teach it, um, it feels kind of odd, but the, the law as you know, I'll, I'll do a quick review, is working through us, through our consciousness. Yes, right? Yes. So we know that through the activity of our minds, through our speaking, through our thinking, through our feeling, through our relationships, spirit is constantly moving in through and as us, okay? So what we're, what our job to do is this. Our job is to use the law responsibly. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say responsibly, there's a big, there is a big, Task about that. It is for you and I to be mindful of our language, mindful when we're encouraging other people. I mean, even when, <laughs> you know, Lila, with the sleepover, I got woken up due to uh, growing pains. That was fun at 12 and four in the morning. <laughs> It's a bit of a rough night. And 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 because I'm being responsible and because I know that spirit is always here. So when I'm rubbing her legs and trying to bring her some comfort, which was not easy, it's it it didn't quite work. I, you know, I'm saying to her, You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Because I'm gonna be responsible with my language. And if I could only leave one message in the in her mind in that moment, I wanted to convey the message that she was gonna be okay. And that's the way I use the law responsibly. I use the law responsibly when if someone does something that I question, that instead of judging them, I wonder why. Because that wondering softens my observation of them instead of, you know, thinking, oh, why did they do that? And what's wrong with them? Mm -hmm. What then comes up is the my, my wondering, huh, I wonder what need is not getting met. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. When people are outing, acting out of character, most often it's some kind of need that is not getting met. And that's, and that's what causes us to do whatever. Now, mind you, I, and I'm not making this about what happened today because, because I haven't digested it all yet, to be perfect. What was his last time? Thank Nichols. you, Nichols. Thank you. Couldn't get it before. I, you know, I can't grasp that yet. But even how I assess, how I read into the articles about it, how I watch it, depending upon what I do with that and how I see it and how I relate to it is part of how I responsibly use the law because then my conversations are going to convey 
the assessments and the judgments that I've made of that. Do you, right, do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So all of who you are, all of who you are, every interaction, every conversation is one where we want to be responsible because your, your word lands. Mm -hmm. Your word matters. You matter. Your engagement with another matters. Your engagement with your children, with your grandchildren, with your employers, your employees, it matters because that's who you're being in the world. We don't have, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take the liberty of saying this, those who are listening, because I'm thinking if you're listening to me, you must want what I have to say. So I'll make that assumption right? Otherwise, why would I be standing here? I believe that we show up with a response, with a sense of responsibility, because that's how we change the world one person at a time, mm -hmm. one conversation at a time. That's how we do it. Kindness, you know, it's like being kind. Kindness always pays off. Being responsible with our language always pays off. That's one. Two is clearly be clear. When you're speaking your word, <laughs> you know, you don't just say, God, I wish. You usually, if you're going to say a wish, you probably wish for something specific. Be clear. Be clear. I, I am knowing that I am healthy. Not, oh, I wish I felt better. Mm -hmm. That's wishy-washy. Yeah. I am healthy. Mm -hmm. That's clear. That delivers a clear message into the mind of spirit that then spirit will respond to. Creatively, have fun. Have fun with how you use it. I mean, it's time to not, I mean, I say this to all, each of us, and some of us are either retired or at retirement age, but there's still this opportunity to be very creative with the law. And to have fun with it and to create out of it. It could be anything. I decided to take um, Reverend Joel's um, class, right? Right. Right for life. Thank you. Right for life class on Saturday mornings. And so it, it, it is all about being creative, but it is about being creative with the written word. And then, of course, because it's Julia Cameron, it takes on the morning pages. And I thought, oh, nothing could get me up early to do that like there's no way but I decided I need to be willing to do something different and that is a new and creative way to participate so I am getting up and doing morning pages oh, right. <laughs> not with a lot of enthusiasm yet but I am getting there I am getting there but you know I was speaking to a friend the other day who's also a colleague and her congregation, she's a minister, and her congregation mm -hmm. always telling her, you should write a book, you should write a book. And I, I know her personally for a long time. I'm like, you've got a lot of stories. Each one of you, each one of you sitting here has been through something. You, most of you have been through a lot of some things, right? You've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. Your life, the, just the life that you're used to that you don't you might not think of uh, think objectively about is a life filled with wisdom and experiences and stories that when told gives people just like you permission to be them permission to even be messed up and realize oh I can be messed up and I can make mistakes and I can survive that Anybody survive some mistakes? Once. Survive some, just once. just once? Survive some divorce or divorces? You're okay, right? When you were going through it, you might not have thought I'm ever going to get through this. You've had illnesses. You've had things that you were so sick as a dog. You said, oh man, I'm never going to get over this. But you did. How do I know you're sitting here in front of me? <laughs> we have all been through and, and taking your life experiences and, cre and, and being creative with how you chat about them with other people gives people permission to heal and to be. So that's just, and that's just one of the ways, just one of the ways, as we were warming up before, Lynette, <laughs> she, can, she can make up stuff on the spot like nobody I know. <laughs> and then Neil started doing it. And, and there was this fun and funny creative sweetness going on here. 
And it was just great. It is, it's important. And I want to say to you, when you do not, uh, uh, very often we do not um, think that we're creative. Anybody judge yourself like that? I'm not creative or I'm not artist, right? I, I, know, I know for a fact that that's a true thing. But the fact is there is no way you are not creative. You just judge your creativity. <laughs> but once you free it, you also free the energies inside of you. Because when we do not allow ourselves to be creative, we are stifling this flow inside of our body that wants to be free. I don't care if it's crayons. Mm -hmm. Take crayons and draw in a coloring book. And the last one, we call it, uh, when we're speaking in practitioner sessions, often people will ask for clarity. They want clarity in their treatments. Um, and, I, and I think of that also clarity and to use the law definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. That means no wishy-washy language. I am here to, to not just survive, but to thrive. I'm here thriving. I'm here creating. I'm here writing. Matter of fact, because of that course, I'm now finally going to be able to say about myself something that I hadn't said, which is I can now say I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. Like I used to say, oh, I write because I teach, but I'm not a writer. I, miss, I was misusing the language and I would say I wasn't very creative. I just like to teach. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm willing to say I'm a writer which is, I can, it almost makes me nervous saying that, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, because, uh, well, <laughs> two actually, but, okay, there you go. and I have one in the process, because one of, part of the class is creating something while in the class. So, responsibly, clearly, creatively, definitely, be definite, be definite. The law responds to your passion. It responds to your passion. So then the thing is, this is how you use it. How do you use it? What do you want? Oh, that day, will you hand me my, the textbook right there, please? Thank you. How, what do you want? Thank you, Darren. What do you want in your life? What do you want? Somebody shout out something you want. What do you want to have? What do you want to do? Beach. What? A home on the beach. A home on the beach. Okay, what else? A home on the beach next to Tony. <laughs> <laughs> she comes on the beach. <laughs> beach next to Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you know, over like Brittany or one of those towns. What else? Anybody else want something else? Oh, peace. 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 Okay. What else? Peace. Something from the side room? <laughs> no, nothing. Joy. Joy. Well, nothing you've asked for is outside of your reach. Now, it doesn't mean it's not going to take work. It's not going to just appear. You're not going to walk down the beach and it's not going to pop up out of the sand because it's, <laughs> the law is not a genie. Some people said on Zoom that they wish they were here. Oh, <laughs> we love you. I'm glad you're tuning in. <laughs> so... <laughs> that was who? Ada. Ada. Oh, yeah, she's down in what Peru, I think. Peru. Oh, shoot. Right, Ada. Yeah. I think you're in Peru. You can probably answer right. Exotic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it won't happen like a magical, mystical genie experience. But nothing, if it matters enough to you, you'll figure out the steps by being guided, and it might mean. First, you start searching. It might mean, I, I don't know what it means, because for each one of us, see, it's not our job to tell God how to do it, but it's your job to be obedient. You must be obedient to the urges. There will be an urge, and it will tell you to write this or to take on a particular job or to go here or to befriend somebody new and different, and you follow those and they lead you to something. They lead you to something. Now, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. But I decided to do it. 20 years later, and I'm still reading the same famous paragraph. Because the fact is, this paragraph, 
And most of you know what's coming right now. Not everybody. Page 52. <laughs> because if you don't know it, this paragraph is the entire teaching. It is literally the, you can hear all the excitement in the room, right? It is the entire teaching. Now, the paragraph itself is writ written, you know, in sing songy kind of confusion. But the fact remains. If you understand this paragraph, you understand the teaching. So I have to give it to you. Hence, it follows that if we believe it will not work, it really works by appearing to not work. The it, what is the it? Spirit law, okay. Um, when we believe that it cannot and will not, then according to principle, it does not. Because if we believe it won't, it won't. If you think you're gonna be sick, you're probably gonna be sick, which is the law of working. It does, it's not working just because you get what you want. It gets, it works because you get what you said. Mm -hmm. You get who you were being, you get how you show up. So, um, but when it does not, <laughs> it still does only, it does according to our belief that it will not. This is our own punishment through the law of cause and effect. We do not enter in because of our doubts and fears. It is not a punishment imposed upon us by the spirit of God, but an automatic result of failing constructively to use the law of God. You know, we went looking, uh, we went looking the other day uh, for some properties, Joe Christiana and I, and we happened into this Christian church down in Montclair that has a lot of lovely space, huge, huge campus. And so at the end, we were, um, I was introduced, I got introduced to the pastor who happened to show up. And in my enthusiasm, I mistakenly, I said, yeah, we're, you know, we're spiritual, we're Christian. Um, I know I didn't say that. I said, we're spiritual, metaphysical, new thought. And you saw his face kind of go like this. And I thought I shouldn't have said that. I'm thinking I'm being forthcoming and, and mm -hmm. honest and out there. Yeah. But I could see yeah. the life drain from his face. Mm -hmm. Pulled a needle. I pulled a needal, which got us <laughs> bumped out of a retreat place one time. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> you. To the board members that we weren't Christians. Uh, in a very Christian facility. We were right uninvited. Right 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 but right, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? However, so I say this to you to say that 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 paragraph is as Christian as you can get. It is Jesus at its finest. Ask, and you shall receive. And you shall receive. Right. This is Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is. But yeah. Holmes wanted to take the. He wanted to take the judgment out of everything. He wanted to take the the uh, the um, superstition out of everything. He wanted to take that which Jesus was using and teach how to apply it. Mm -hmm. So as much as you don't hear me talking much about Jesus, this is pure Jesus. <laughs> this is, we are... As much as it doesn't look like it, because I'm the one standing in front of you, we are of Christian lineage. Because Holmes just wanted people to get it all without the superstition getting in the way. The problem is condemnation and thinking you have to be saved. He wanted people to get it all without that in the way. Hence, it follows, says... You and I are going to have the life we believe according to what we are doing, what we're thinking, to what we're speaking, and the way we're being. There was, um, I use, I didn't bring them with me, um, but I, I use two, I use a Bible that is called Seek and Find. It's a translation, but it's one that I can read that works for me. And I also have this beautiful little book called Psalms for uh, Nan Merrill. I can't remember the name of the book at the moment. And um, 
So with what I'm about to read to you, it's translated through that, you know, through that language, through language that I can live with. The law of the Lord is perfect. That's Psalm 19, colon 7, if you're interested. The law of love is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of love is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of love are right, rejoicing the heart. The authority of love is pure, enlightening the, the eyes. The spirit of love is glorious, enduring forever. The rights of love are true awakening compassion the presence the power the love the vibration of the one as love is what we're always dealing with and interacting with and it is why i i personally choose because i know you know i've been saying for 20 years you have a, you have the freedom to choose what you call it you have the freedom to think of it as a science or as a deeply devout relationship with the one i love relating to it as god as love so for me it provides warm fuzzies mm -hmm. and if i'm going to surrender myself over to something i want those warm fuzzies mm -hmm. so there's sometimes i'll use you know different language but when you and I, so how to use it, this is all about how to use it. We use it through the very expression that is uniquely you. Not me, not Tony, not Reverend Joel. You, how you decide your relationship that you develop is going to be there in all moments. It's there. It's actually right there, right in within your reach all the time you are never outside of it ever ever do you get the, can you really catch that you are never alone you are never without an option to heal to speak into possibility never never think you're alone please you're not because the intelligence that created creates all the time and it's still happening you deserve to be in relationship with that one so let us take this into let's let us take this into treatment and i can easily say would you like to hold the hand of somebody next to you <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> lovely Lovely, we're connected. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> oh, so we accept and allow the sweetness of this moment and the laughter and the giggling because that is good. That is God. That is love. That is a beautiful expression of this flowing essence that only wants to play by means of you, by means of your heart, by means of your excitement, your consciousness. So let us each speak a, a yes to accept and allow the one to demonstrate through us. Yes. It can be as simple as growing a brand new garden or as huge as traveling around the world or obviously the three beach houses we're going to open up. <laughs> <That's back. so> <laughs> Clearly with fences between so we can visit, but I, I, I digress. <laughs> Let us accept and allow the beauty. Please. The law loves you. Some would say the Lord loves you. I was taught to change that into the law or love. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. The Lord thy God, the law, thy, thy, thy authority, love as a vibration, loves, loves, mm -hmm. loves. And as we accept and allow and develop, develop a relationship, it is magical, mysterious, wonderful. I call this time good. I bless each one of us listening now or in the future. And I simply allow this word to be so. 
on this good and glorious day. And let us remember, I'm going to ask you to repeat this after me, and you know this. I am the place where love resides. I am the place where love resides. For this and so much more, I am so incredibly grateful. And I surrender this word and allow it to be so. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs>